in the Sydney Swans earlier on in, in as you were talking there and uh, I had Paul Ruse on the podcast as well yeah. who, was, who was the man instrumental for turning Sydney Swans he around. was I've, I've done a podcast with Paul actually he's a great great thing lo- lovely lovely guy as well and he yeah. he was talking about when he was because a lot of your fo- focus there it, none of what you've said in any of that was based on results or outcome. There was no, no. nothing based around on field, off field, winning, losing anything like around that. It was all about getting the right people. And Paul tells this story about when they were trying to select the cultural leaders within the team. And it was a very simple process, which was what do we want? At, what, who do we think our essential hero is in the team? Write it down, describe it. And then yes, you get those descriptive words. They're kind, empathetic, whatever. And then he got them to to nominate five players in the team, regardless of rank or hierarchy or, or or time they've spent in the club, and name five players that uphold those those behaviours. And it was he said it was just really wild how there was rookies that were being named and veterans and and your Mavericks were being left out and and yep. they were like kicking yep. up a fuss and all of yep. this was done in a pre season or post season whenever they were reviewing it, but he said that's how you essentially did it and i i wondered how much of that getting getting that right with the guys at the top is just so fundamental because i've experienced it where you go and have the you go and build those values you go and build those names and those those words and and then the thing that falls down is like the the weeks following where it's the hard it's almost the hardest point to to keep it going and not fall into old habits and routines yeah. and draw a line in yeah. the sand. And yeah. I think probably that is, I think your work with the All Blacks and what you wrote on the All Blacks was slightly different, I guess, because it was done over a long period of time. But people that are trying to draw that line in the sand right now and not mm-hmm. fall into the trap of going back to old ways, how, how do you believe the best way to to stop that from happening? Yeah, well, look, look, you know, just on, on that sort of selection of leadership thing, um, there's been, um, don't ask me to quote it because I've never been able to find it again, but I read a really interesting paper um, that uh, about, that was following um, how school kids, natural selection of leadership with school kids. So beginning of a term, kids come together. Usually there's one kid decides he or uh, uh, he decides he or she is going to be the leader, the boss of the gang. Um, and um self-selects usually on kind of capability which i think yeah. plays to sort of yeah. what you're saying you know i'm the best striker so i i score the more goals so i should be the captain kind of thing mm. yep um but what what tends to happen in those groups is that they self-select a leader over a couple of weeks and that capability leader the, the one who's put themselves forward tends to be eased away and the leader that is self-selected by the group is the one that best represents the values of that group, hmm. which is exactly, I think, probably where Paul was going with that idea of creating the kind of DNA and then selecting around that DNA. What you know, that's effectively what happened, right? Hmm. What does what what do we value most in in a player? Who matches those values? And and that's what I call kind of leading from within. You know, you, you, you find leaders who lead from within, who embody the spirit of the group. Um, and because they embody the spirit of the group, it is almost small less spiritual. You know, they become the esprit de corps, the spirit of the body, if you like. And they embody what it means to be that kind of uh, all black or whatever. And, um, and that's really where you get that kind of, connection the sort of the, the the tissue the connective tissue i think of leadership um and as you say you know that may not be the obvious candidate in terms of the capability your top run scorer or your striker or whatever leave them to be good at what they do but find somebody who represents the core of that group you know if you think about i don't know manchester united and you think about a a, um, a roy Keane, for instance you know, probably not the most talented footballer there, but he absolutely for a while, for a while embodied that group. Mm-hmm. If you look, if you look at, you know, so whether cap, whether wearing an armband or not, they will be a leader in one way or another. And so I think finding, finding 
that kind of uh, and and being prepared to make those decisions. I think your your thing is exactly right. It's very easy to go through a values exercise and you stick your values on the wall. You've got to get them onto the floor, and that begins with your people. And you need to select the people in who represent those values and your leadership around that, and build your group around um, something that is more permanent and principled than about personality or performance. Um, because the 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 school will take care of itself. You know, the performance will come. Mm. Um, yeah. But 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 it's not about going. You know, he or she is best in their position. You need to you need to be good in your position, and you want to lead by example. You've got to. You can't be you know the worst player on the park either, because you won't make the grade, and everyone's going. Well, it's a bit ordinary. So yeah. one of the values has got to be you know professional excellence. You know, and the ability to perform. So, but it is a balancing act. But who represents the values of your group best? That spirit, um, really, I think, is usually the best nod as a leader. Mm. 